Yeah, one technique of risk analysis, which is very popular in the real world, is assigning probabilities. See, we know one thing. Whenever we are doing projections with respect to the cash flows of a project, there is definitely an uncertainty. We are never sure that whatever projections we have done, whether we will really achieve those projections or not. So there is always a possibility of achieving the target or not achieving the target. In other words, our projection may be achieved, may not be achieved. The chance of occurrence of something or the chance of non-occurrence of something, that is what is statistically understood as probability. So it makes a lot of sense to carry out probability analysis. Probability analysis can also be understood with reference to scenario analysis. Earlier, we had seen one technique, scenario analysis, where we were building scenarios in form of whether it will be the best case, whether it shall be a worst case, or maybe it may be a most likely situation. So if things are in our favor, what will be the cash flow? So the way I estimate the cash flow over here is, for example, let us say I'm doing projections for the first year. Think in that way. I'm doing projections for the first year. So what I ask myself is that what is the possibility? Let us say I personally feel that maybe everything will go in our favor. So we consider the possibility to be the best case. And then we ask ourselves, that if it is a best case, then what will be the cash flow that will be generated? Our calculations are showing that the cash flow that will be generated will be 1 lakh. Okay. Then in that particular year itself, quite possible that things may go against us. If things are going against us, then that is the worst case that is possible. If things go horribly wrong, then what will be my cash flow? I feel that in that case, my cash flow will be only 20,000. And then somewhere in between, right, there might also be something known as a most likely situation. If it is a most likely situation, I'm expecting a CFAT, let us say, of 75,000 rupees. So three different scenarios. And on the basis of that, I'm trying to estimate what shall be my outcome. So based on my outcomes, I have projected the cash flow after tax. Now, now ask yourself, what is the possibility of occurrence of each of these cases? What is the chance? And that is where we are introducing the probability over here. PI will stand for probability. What is the possibility that it shall be the best case? I feel there is a 20% chance. So the best case probability is 0.2. What if things will go wrong? We feel 30% chances there that things will go wrong. And finally, the most likely situation, let's say it carries a probability of 0.5. We know the total of probability will be 1. The maximum probability that is possible is 1. So based on this, what I can do is I can determine an expected CFAT. Okay, I can work out an expected CFAT. How will I get an expected CFAT? I'll just show you the calculation. Our expected CFAT will be our expected CFAT. We even call this as bar CFAT. Statistically, we write this as bar CFAT. What will it be? Whatever projections that you have carried out, we should multiply that with its corresponding probabilities. Yes. So this 1 lakh, I will multiply by 0.2. This 20,000, I'll multiply with 0.3. And this 75,000, I'll multiply by 0.5. Whatever answer that I'm getting, I will consider that to be the expected CFAT. This expected CFAT will be discounted and we will work out the NPV. This NPV will be referred as the expected NPV. So what we are really doing is, we say that probability is a chance of occurrence or non-occurrence of some future uncertain event. 
Based on our experience, we should assign the probabilities. These probabilities can be objective or it can be subjective. For example, if this is the kind of project that I have done many, many times, let's say I do this kind of a project on a repetitive basis, then more or less I have already assigned the probabilities. So these probabilities will be objective probabilities. But in case if I am planning to launch a new product, let's say I'm planning to launch a new product, then I'm not too sure about the probabilities. Then at that case, the probabilities will be subjective. Once the probabilities have been assigned, as I said, multiply your projections with the corresponding probabilities and take a sum total. This is what will give you expected CFAT. We can even denote that as bar CFAT. Whatever answer I'm getting here, I will say is bar CFAT. Discount it and work out the NPV. This NPV shall be the expected NPV. In case if you are calculating expected NPV for more than one project, select the project that has the highest positive expected net present value. Decision criteria is not going to change. We do have a bit of write up with respect to the same. Yes, uh, the first para is basically analyzing the meaning of probability. As I said, probability is all about a chance whether a particular event will occur or not. Okay, maximum probability possible is one, least probability is zero. Probability of one means the event will definitely occur. Probability of zero means event will definitely not occur. But when we are doing analysis, we will have to assign the probabilities for the cash inflow. Cash outflow will have a definite probability. When I'm launching a new project, I know what will be the total amount of cash outflow because cash outflow has to be incurred as on today. So I'm very sure cash inflows will happen in future. That's where the uncertainty is. Now, they are saying in the first point, that probabilities have to be assigned, right? Probabilities can be objective or subjective, as we were discussing. If you have done these kinds of projects many a times in the past, then your probability analysis has already been done. You know, I have a certain level of confidence in my projections. So that is the objective probabilities. Or else, I will have to apply my own judgment and work out the probabilities those probabilities will turn out to be subjective in nature. And the second step, yes, is to estimate the expected return of the project. That's what I was saying, multiply with the corresponding probabilities and take the total. That is nothing but your expected monetary value. And these expected monetary values should be discounted and we should work out the expected net present value. And yes, if there are two or more projects, select the project that has the maximum expected net present value. 